This is episode three of our three-part series on probing. So this is the finale. We're gonna open up with a demo that's gonna take everything we learned from the first two videos and put them into application, and then it's gonna allow us to move on to probing extensions. The demo. Now, hopefully, this will stand for demonstration. Uh, that's what I hope, anyway. So we got some pieces of UHMWM. We got one in the machine here. They actually did a really nice job. Um, so, you know, but we're still going to program. Uh, we're still going to probe on all four sides. Right? We're still going to do that. And we got multiple pieces. We've got four pieces. They're all a little different. Uh, we're going to probe him right in the center, just like we talked about in the previous videos. Now, we can probe right here, or here, or here, or here, wherever we want to, right? Even on the bottom, if we desire, and that's what we want. The only thing that matters is it needs to be in the same place you put it in Fusion, right? That's so important. Now, we're going to run a probing operation, and they've actually updated the probing operations inside of ha, the Haas control here. And Mark Terberry from Haas, he was trying to tell me about it. There's my, got this little super glitter magnet on the back. I think I'm slick. But, uh, you know, he was trying to tell me, he's like, hey, man, you really need to update to the new software because we've updated the probing package on it. Uh, and I did. I updated it. But it didn't do nothing. It didn't do anything. So I thought he was crazy. But uh, my tech just installed the wrong software. So then they came back a few years later and they installed, and it is different. It is better. Like what you just saw, he probed the Z. He stored that in Z. So he'll probe all three axes with one operation, which is really nice. Uh, I don't know if it's nice enough to update, um, but if you already got a tech coming in your shop, definitely have them do it uh, because it does save time. One operation, I got Z, I got X, I got Y. Before, you could only do if you did a corner, but now you can do it on any width, right, or pocket, or boss, right? You can do all three axes, so it's pretty slick. So now what we're going to do is we're going to jump into Fusion. We, pro we put the stock in. We probed him off. Every time we drop another piece of stock in, he's going to probe the sides of the part to find the center. And we're also going to do some other in-process probing to check some features and make sure that right here we get that dimension. And there's if, if you're not seeing it on the screen, uh, there's a reason why, and we're going to solve that for you. Okay, so we just left the machine. We dropped that piece of UHMW in there. We probed him on the, the Z, the X, and the Y. Now, when we take that piece out, when he's done machining, we're gonna drop in another piece, and we want him to do the same thing. We want him to probe him on the Z because that material could vary, uh, even though they did a great job on cutting it this time. And then we're gonna probe on the, the X and the Y Notice our work coordinate offset is in the center of the part. So important. I keep emphasizing that. It needs to be in the same place. After that, you know, we're just going to machine this part. Uh, notice we're boring these holes. So that gives us an opportunity to check and see if that cutter is cutting accurately. So we're going to probe this hole on the end. Now, we can, we can also put in additional checks. Uh, for instance, uh, we can go to Setup, Manual in C, in put a stop in here, right? Then we take and say, well, I'm, I need to know this, this length is also correct, right? Now he's gonna program this bore, or he's gonna probe this bore to tell, let us know where he's at, and he's gonna display that measurement on the screen, and then here he's gonna do a stop, so we got time to walk up to the machine, see if that bore is correct, and then when we hit OK or start again, then he's going to probe the width and he's going to tell us what dimension that is too. So you can see as many times as you can add a stop and another probing operation, we can just keep stacking checks or QC operations inside the software without having to buy the inspection software. So now we're at the end of our program where he's going to come down and measure our bore to tell us whether he's in or out of tolerance. And we got about five thousandths plus or minus. And really, 
If we designed it ourselves, we'd have way more than that because there's a big bolt that goes through there, right? But we're going to check it like it's a precision bore. So this came up with a number. It says 0.782. So we're two thousandths over. That's perfectly acceptable for plastic. And I guarantee you, if we told the probe to go a little deeper, it would probably be closer than we think. But how do we get this number? How do we get the measurement of our probe to show up on our controller? Well, what we want to do is go to current command and select that. And then we want to go to timers on the next gen control. And then we have two options that we're going to change. One is macro label number one, where we're literally just going to type in size or measure or whatever you want, like, you know, whatever you want to say there. It doesn't matter at all. The next thing is macro assign number one. What are we assigning it? Well, on this controller, notice it's 10188.0. That's the macro variable that allows you to show the size that you measured with your Pro. Now, if you're doing it on the previous generation control, notice that you see the same uh, name and size, or name and label, or a sign, a label and an assign, but the code is a little different. It's only 188 instead of 10188. All right, now it's time for the second shift machinist to change out to this, this part. New part, ready to go. Okay, so we just ran that part and now what we're doing is, you know, we're done with him. We're gonna run both op ones on, we have two versions of this. And so this is the one we just ran where we probed and probed and then we checked him and then we did the check on the length, right? So now we're gonna move to this part. The first thing you probably noticed as soon as I flipped over to this part is that he is not as wide. The other one is four inches wide and this one is three inches wide, but I'm lazy. And I'm doing this for a reason. This is completely impractical, but let this kind of sit on your you know, head here for a minute. I'm going to just probe in Y, and I'm going to call him rough probing, right? So you're taking out a four-inch block of metal, right? You drop in a three, well, it's through HMW. Then you drop in something that's only three inches. But you can't do this nice, uh, you know, probing on all sides until we rough probe him in. In other words, we just we just reset that Y to where it approximately is. So this is how we did it. Uh, we, we probed this one side, we add the geometry, my approach is now one inch. So this gives me a lot of opportunity to, to fail. Uh, so he's gonna drop that probe, he's gonna go all the way up to that part and touch it and then set the work coordinate offset, it's gonna offset it an inch and a half up. After he does this probing operation, then what he's gonna do is probe Z, and then probe like a fine probing operation. In other words, uh, now that the Y has been offset a half of an inch, then he's gonna probe this stock and then reset it right in the middle of where we want it. In other words, this might fail, it probably would, unless we also changed its approach, right? Unless I did one inch on everything, which would be overkill. So uh, this kind of, this works when you're doing like castings, you drop in a big casting, you can probe a rough probe operation to find out where it basically is, and then probe a particular feature that you might miss, and then you can do your drilling or milling operation, and then come back in with a third probing operation to check it. All right, second shift is back. We got the first part finished up. We're gonna switch it out with the second one. All right, we got the first one. You definitely tell a lot smaller. Alright, 
So the last machinist said that he had all this figured out. So we're going to try it and let's see what happens. We're going to call up the program. Let's see. Okay, so what if you think your machine is smart enough to correct its own mistakes? Well, it can, right? So you walked up to the machine a minute ago, you got to see the measurement of that bore on the controller, and so if there was a problem, you can correct it. But what if you wanted it to just correct its own mistakes? Well, you have to have probing inspect, right? In other words, the inspection or probing extension. And so when you do that, you can say probe geometry. Probe geometry, you select the hole. That's great. Uh, I want to, you know, go a little deeper inside of this bore. You can go, you can go as deep as your stylus. I'm going to go a half inch. You can go set, you can go three quarter. We can push it a little bit. So this probing operation is going to come up after. Now keep in mind, this, is, this hole is 0.78. That means that your approach is going to be off, right? If you try to approach, this is on what it rounds up to like almost 0.9. Yeah, your radius exceeds that. You just machined it in the same operation, so there's no need to have a lot of approach. Uh, you can shorten that down. Uh, you definitely want it to be a circular hole and not one with a... Uh, with an island. If you do an island, the nice thing is to know it will work because you get to see the lead-ins. But if it works, then eh, you just do not a partial but just a full hole. Now we're going to go to actions on this. You know, our position is not going to be out because we just machined it based on the machine, so he's going to be in the right position according to where he thought he did it anyway. That would come into, you know, if you were just going to use the machine as a CMM. But we're not. We're using it to update our cutter compensation. And so the first thing we would do is say, well, on our geometry on here, what cut that operation? Well, it was our bore. Now, inside bore, you got to make sure you have cutter compensation enabled to wear or whatever you're using, and it will offset it. So now it knows what tool it's using. It gives you all this information, which is great. Now it gives you a minimum threshold, which is good, because if it's intolerance but out five tenths, there's no sense to go back and recut it. But if you say, if it's out by seven thousandths, you know, or six thousandths, I've got a tolerance of up, you know, plus or minus five, then please go back and recut that. Then it gives you another setting, error correction. Error correction means it's going to do 100% of all six thousandths of an inch. But what if you just went back and recut it? The flex of that tool would remove material. So, in other words, some of this needs to be that correction, some of this needs to be six thousandths, and some of this needs to take into consideration that you're going to get some flex in that tool. And so, this error correction is kind of handy when you do that, you know. So, so far, you know, probing is like a breeze, right? You just, you just pull up the probing operation, select the surface, and you're off to the races. Uh, like, uh, for instance, I just select the surface and boom, you know, we're going to probe it and everything's a piece of cake. The problem comes in if you start doing castings or injection molded surfaces. Uh, for instance, this one, you know, I just modeled this up a minute ago. And uh, all these surfaces are drafted, right? So these are drafts at, at five degrees total, so two and a half degrees, which is a little exaggerated. Uh, but then the side ones here for, you know, finding out where this X is going to be, well, they're also like kind of like a parallelogram, you know, they're, 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 you know, they're offset here by 10 degrees and they're offset here by five. And so is it possible to probe features like that in Fusion? Because uh, when Fusion, when you're using this, uh, you know, 
probing operations, it's just calling up what Renishaw made that, that gets the machine and the controller to do what you need it to do. Uh, so it's not like Fusion is writing these, so they have to use what's already there to make these things work. And, and so there's limitations. And that limitation is draft angles, right? So this is where a little bit of sleight of hand, a little bit of modeling can really come in handy. And so what I did is I just kind of selected this top surface, offset it down to where I know the probe would have a nice easy uh, access to that geometry. And then I sketched out or extracted this geometry from all these sides. And then I drew probing locations. I could have probably just drawn all of it as just one square. But one thing I'm very interested in is the top and the bottom here to find the center of Y. Those are pretty easy, right? Because they're just squares. They're squares. They line up. They run parallel to this surface here. But to find X, now these are the parallelogram, right? 10 degrees off axis and then 5 degrees in. And so what I'm really looking forward to there, looking for there, is that where that probe is going to come in contact here needs to be directly across from where it comes in contact here. In other words, uh, the, if they moved up, right, if these, if, if these cubes right here just moved up here, well, you, you'd be off, right, because the center of this and the center of this would be kind of over here, you know. You could do quadrants. You could probe here, and then you could probe down here, right, uh, but it's it's better just to go ahead, and it's a lot easier just to go ahead and program uh, uh, that this operation right across center to center, right where that probe connects, and that way you know you've captured that geometry. And then what we did is just extrude those into these blocks, like this. And so when we go to make our probing operation, it's a piece of cake. You just select here he automatically puts it in the center of that block so you want to make sure you drew these things correctly that they're coming out of that center line but you can't select all four unless they're one body um, again click click piece of cake now you have probed your part you got the Z and then you've got the Y and you got the X, right? The X, the Y location and your X location. Uh, piece of cake. Now, there's probably a little easier geometry there. You probably noticed you could have used. Uh, yeah, you could you could just extrude this as a boss, and then just probe him as well. As long as that approach and the over travel work, it doesn't matter what diameter that that feature is. He doesn't have to correspond to your part at all. If you were just selecting one side like the top and the bottom, then yeah, it would need to correspond with exactly where that point is. But when you're, now when you're, when you're measuring the bolt and finding the center, measuring both top and bottom, finding the center, then it kind of takes that off the board for you, right? He, he's, he's offsetting that for you, and he's going to find the dead center of that, that boss or the dead center uh, of this par parallelogram. Uh, and that should get you through uh, setting up production on castings and production on injection molded parts. Okay, I know this video went a little long, but I got a comment about the battery wait, wait, wait. these things. I'm pretty it's sure it's been probed enough at this point. All right, I know that was video was a little bit long. Hopefully you stuck with us. If you want to see something else, make sure you leave a comment. Hopefully you like the video, so hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe.